Welcome to LSC. It's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hens. Today I have with me the head baseball coach over Kickertown, Chad Austinfeld. Chad, appreciate you coming by. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. And uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, you growing up, but you grew up in the Northampton area. Yes. And you played uh, little league ball and all that stuff. Talk a little bit about that. Um, I grew up uh, over, over near Bethel High School. My family and I, I also, my brother, we all pretty much live five minutes from the school. Um, in different directions, but we're all pretty close. But we, my brother and I both grew up playing for Northampton Little League and um, then both for Bethel High School. And um, I'm six years older than him, so there was a six-year difference between us. But, yeah, we're still over there. Right. Well, talk a little bit about some of, maybe some of the players you had, some of the coaches you had when you, before you went over to Bethel. Okay, um, as Little League, um, I had a guy named Wayne Kimbler and um, also – um, Fuzzy Allen. Uh, Billy Allen was one of my high school uh, teammates, but his right. dad coached senior league. His dad was, you know, a fixture down at Northampton Little right. League, and he was an excellent person. I still see him from time to time because his grandson is playing. Matter of fact, his grandson, I believe, is an eighth grader over at Bethel this year. But he, you know, both of those two guys were guys that really made baseball fun, taught, you know, the game, the fundamentals, things like that. Well, you know, I talked to a lot of people I talked to. It's always, it seems like they'll get with a coach when they're young and they're just makes it fun for them and yeah. they just and, you know, and it ends up being more than a, just a game for them they end up coaching like like you did but then you went to Bethel and this was before they had uh, ninth graders over at Bethel yes a matter of fact um my 10th grade year was the first year that they brought ninth graders so it was kind of nice I was never a low man on the totem pole at right. the high school but yeah w when I was in the 10th grade that was my first year at Bethel and you know as through my JV career, you know, ninth and 10th grade, uh, I played for Ray Barlow. He went on and um, coached at Tallwood, but right. he was an excellent coach. I mean, for the longest period of time, Bethel, you know, won the district, so to speak. There is no official championship for JVs, right. but, you know, every year that, um, when I played and even up through when my brother played, they were either first or, you know, right there. I think it was something ridiculous, like six years in a row they had won district. Well, I know that there was a lot of good ball players come through the, the uh, Northampton League. Do you think it's because I know you had to have good athletes, but you had to have some coaches that really got the, the, the taught the fundamentals? Yeah, it was different. The big thing that was different from then and now, there was no travel ball. Like today, you see like at the Little League level, it's really filtered down because the best players, they go on to play travel ball where they can play, where we would play a 16 or 18 game season. You're playing 50 games a year, you know, wow. as a you know 12 year old kid nowadays. And But yes, we had we had good people that were a part of it. There's another guy, um, Ross Phillips. He was never actually my coach except in All-Stars, but he, his life was dedicated, you know, to, to Little League baseball. And the guy, right. Hank London, you know, his, his son, Mike London's a coach right. at UVA. He was awesome. He was a league president, and he really, you know, put his life into it. And um, those kind of people, you know, made it what it was, and right. it was really good. Made it fun for you mm -hmm. guys. All right, and then you finally get to play for Roger Bouchard. <laughs> yes. And we've talked about Roger Bouchard. Yes. Character, but I tell you, he, he did a great job coaching. Yes. Um, my senior year, we actually did win district. And, um, you know, so I, play, I played it for him my junior and senior year. And um, he— Back then, you know, as a player, you didn't really understand him. He's very animated. He didn't have, he wasn't necessarily the player's coach in terms of having a really close relationship with players. As a coach now, I kind of get him more and I, I, I really look back and I think I appreciate him more now than I did then. But he knew his stuff. I mean, we did a lot of things that, you know, we practiced fundamentals and, you know, he, we had good practices. We worked hard and, and ultimately you win a cha championship. We went to, uh, regionals and we played um, first colonial and we ended up losing but we faced a guy who went on to have a major league career I believe his name was Jeff Ware he played for the Blue Jays and you know he was out there throwing in the 90s that <laughs> night and shut us down so. right well you know we were talking about assistant now Roger didn't have any assistants back there but I, I remember talking to Blair Wood came mm -hmm. in and Blair Played for Roger, yep. came back and said, well, I'll help you. And he said, well, you're my JV, oh, my sister. Comes. Yes. Blair actually was two years ahead of me. I got okay. to play with him one year. And um, like I said, we didn't have, we had American Legion. They have American Legion now, but it's not as big as it used to be then. But I got right. to play with Blair one year. But when my brother was playing, Blair was the assistant coach. But for my time there and the years before, 
it was just Coach Bouchard by himself, you know, and it, it was interesting because, you know, you think now as like as a coach, you talk to your assistant coach and things like this, and he really didn't have a whole lot of people to talk to. <laughs> Maybe he was talking to himself and other yeah. guys. Saw. But he and he talked about the the the. the Parents coming and taking care of the field. Yes, I tell you, because when I first went over, he said, "Welcome to to Bethel Park," and then it became Bethel Stadium because yes. he put up an extra set of bleachers. But that's the way he was. Yeah, it, it was always that at that time, Bethel and Northampton Little League were very tied together because you had. Um, for example, the Little League used Bethel's field for Senior League, right. and um, so they kept up the field for him. Now he did he did work on the field, of course, right. but all through the summer it was being played on and you know kept up. So I mean, there was a lot of community involvement. Where, for example, over at Kickatan, we don't have another you know league that comes in to play right. on the field. We we use it for our own summer program. Okay, well, let's talk about you. You graduated from Bethel. Yes. And then you went to school. Yes, I went to Virginia Wesley and I went over there to pitch. But being <laughs> being the idiot that I am, I really, <laughs> I really, have said yeah, that, but you I really, wanted to hit. I wanted to hit. I was a good hitter in um, high school, and you know I kept pushing it and pushing it, telling the coach, "Hey, look, take a look at me." So he did. In fall ball, I ended up, you know, playing a couple, you know, games at first base. I ended up blowing out my knee. So then you transferred. Well, yeah, the, my knee it was wasn't quite that quick, but my knee gave me a lot of trouble, and I had I kept going back to the doctor, and I was having it, you know, swell up more than it should. So then I ended up going to the doctor again and finally said, you know what, the season's already starting. I'm not going to be able to get ready. So, you know, Virginia Wesleyan is a private school. It costs a lot of money. So I decided to transfer to Christopher Newport, got myself in shape again after that, built up, ready for a new season, went out and pitched in a couple fall games, did real well. And of course, coach needed somebody to play first base. I jumped on it and blew it out again. So. <laughs> Tough well, lesson. Just didn't want you to play first base. No, I, I, was, I tell you, it was really devastating at that point. Oh, I'm sure you, it was. Yeah. Well, that kind of ended up, and then you went to Old Dominion, you got your degree. Yeah, I went. I ended up, um, I wanted to teach and coach baseball. So it took me a little longer than four years to finish my degree because I kept getting distracted by baseball. I went and I umpired a couple years, but then I became JV coach at Minchville. I did that for about seven years, taking classes here and there, but I finished up. Uh, being certified for history and or social studies and for um, special education. So right. I was hired um, in 2008 as a special ed teacher at Hampton High, and I teach students with learning disabilities, and I'm also endorsed for social studies. Right. And I'm going to get to that point in a minute, but I, you're talking about your dad and your mm -hmm. brother. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's been around baseball the whole life. life. Your dad yeah. played at Kickatan. Yes. And, uh, and that was prior to Buddy Denton, so yes. we're really going back. Yeah. Uh, and your brother now is a head coach at, was he, it Denby? Denby. He's a head coach at Denby in his second year, yes. So, so you got a real neat rivalry when you guys meet. Yeah, last year we, we played for the first time, and um, I, my team won by one run the first time, and his team won by one run the second time, so it was really close. And, of course, this year we're scheduled to play against each other to open the season tomorrow. So oh, wow. <laughs> this is like a little civil war. Yeah, so. that sounds good. Yeah. All right, now, you're teaching over to Hampton. Yes. And you kick it, kick it is where you got a coach. Yes. But you was talking about Myra, how, how well she does, the principal over at Hampton, to help you Yes, get over there. I can't say enough, you know, for how they treat me at Hampton High School. Um, I've heard some horror stories from other coaches, you know, trying to do with two different buildings, and they treat me as if I coached in that building. I mean, it, it's amazing, and Miss Chambers, you know, even today for me to be here, you know, it, it's just wonderful. And then I have two co-teachers that I teach with, and both of them, you know, there's days that I have to leave early, and they're fine with it. So Mr. Harris and Mr. Osterdahl, I've got to give a shout out to them. Right. I, you know, I really appreciate them because they, I couldn't do it without them. Talk a little bit about your team, this year's team. This year's team, um, you know, last year we went, we were the first team from Kickatan baseball to go to regionals in 17 years, and we lost a big player. Uh, we only lost three players overall, though, so I've got... But you lost Jake Cave. Yeah, we <laughs> lost Jake Cave, and you, there's nothing you can do to replace a player like, like that. Yeah. However, um, this is my fourth year, so all the kids that I kept as freshmen that first year, they're seniors. And I'm a junior, so for the first time, I have a team that doesn't have any any freshmen on the team, and not only on the team, but playing key positions. My first year, you know, kid Darnell Ware, who's a senior now, one of the best players, you know, in the district, he was playing shortstop for me, you know, and you know, just gr going through the growing pains that you know, being a freshman, you know, it requires. And yeah. um, you know, I've got Kippy Holbrook's another kid who's a senior. 
Um, but I've got a, you know, a good core of kids who now we've had this program together for four years. We've worked year round for four years where you know, they, the conditioning, the dedication, they've put all this time in and we're a veteran team. And we've, even last year with Jake, I mean, the majority of our players were underclassmen that right. we were, you know, other than two others, all of our other starters were. You know, I had two freshmen playing at key positions most of the year, you know, number two pitcher and a lot of the season at catcher. So to, to be successful in baseball, you have to go to your pitcher. And, yeah. I'm, and, and uh, fast food softball, same thing. Yep. You've got to have athletes at other positions, but if you don't have somebody to get the ball across yep. the plate and, and have more than one pitch, you're hurting. How are you for, uh, set up for pitchers this year? We actually, um, I'm fortunate, um, the guy who, you know, on paper, he's our number one pitcher is uh, named Nate Matheson, and he, he is a sophomore. And last year as a freshman, a 14-year-old freshman, I, I can't remember, I think his record ended up being four and four, but he had a whole lot of hard luck losses. I mean, you know, this kid in the tournament, he threw two consecutive one hitters that wow. in the Peninsula District Tournament. And he bailed us out of so much that, you know, early in the season, I wasn't sure if he was gonna be our number two pitcher or not, but, but he clearly was. And on top of that, he hit over 400 for the season. So he's my number one, but my other two seniors, my key players, Darnell Ware and Kippy Holbrooks, they're also pitchers. I've also got a couple other guys, um, Matt Cowan, Donald Athey, Perry Barber. These, I've got a lot of guys who I don't have to rely on one or two people. I can spread the wealth around. Well, that's, that's good. And their experience, because I did that last year, even though Jake and Nate got the majority of our innings, right. the other guys have all pitched varsity baseball, you know, a significant, significant amount. And um, again, their experience, there's, you know, we went through, through some crazy things last year, so there's nothing's gonna surprise them. Well, that's good. We're gonna wrap this thing up a little bit, but I want you to, to, to let the people know that what athletics, how that helps you in teaching. Um, especially over at Hampton High School, um, being a social studies teacher, it's really, I have, a, I have a lot of fun taking the past. Like a lot of kids don't understand why we study the past, but especially a lot of the wars and the things that we study in world history, you can relate them to sports, like how football teams operate, things like that, or how basketball teams, you can you know, teach them how it relates and they understand that. And I think that's one of the things that's you know, really fun is you can you know give them something and say hey when you're playing basketball when you're playing football so we have a lot of basketball and football players in class you know you understand that this is why they did a certain thing like we talk about the spartans you know and the way that they fought in a phalanx that doesn't make sense to them today because you know they're thinking why are they just going to stand there and then when you explain to them think about an offensive line in football the light goes on and they say, ah, I get it. Okay. And they understand. Yeah. It's the teamwork, you know, and right. little things like that make it worthwhile. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank you for tuning in to LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Chad Austin Trout. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Till next time. <laughs>